Hello, I'm Jason Solomons and welcome to Seen Anything Good Lately. This podcast is a culture chat show about giving you the finest recommendations, where I ask brilliant guests if they've seen anything good lately, and they tell me what they've been watching, reading and listening to, providing you with loads of new tips for entertainment. The audiobook is read by Meryl Streep, which is just a dream. We'll sort of put on some Debussy or Beethoven, cook dinner, create a little culture in the house. This is the show I've been longing to make, and its title comes from the question I get asked the most in my life. Seen anything good lately? As a film critic for nearly 25 years, I've got it at parties, shouted at me on the street, in the back of taxis. I get it from friends from family and colleagues, from professionals such as producers at film festivals, and directors and actors in interviews, on the radio, at parties. They all ask me, what's the next best thing I can watch? They all want to know. So I thought I'd turn it back on everyone and ask them. Everyone's a critic now, after all, in the pub, at parties, at dinners, with mates on Zoom calls. Everyone's got an opinion and a platform on which to air their views and share their passions at God, I mean, people really are passionate about what they're watching. They're evangelical about it. Oh, you've got to see this. Oh, you'll love it. Oh, I'm obsessed with it. I know you're going to love it. And they are obsessed with it. If you're in the middle of a series, you're obsessed with watching the next episode that night, when to get the next hit. And it's that energy and excitement I want to share with you on this podcast. I've been enthusing about movies as a job for so many years, since 1997, in fact. But I've never known a time when so many people have access to so much stuff. On TV, on Netflix, Amazon, Mubi, BFI Player, Curzon Home Cinema, BBC iPlayer, iTunes, Spotify, Kindles, Audibles. The critic, then, has to change to acknowledge all of that. I can't possibly keep up with all the stuff, but I can keep tabs on what people are watching and talking about, and I can probe them deeper on what it is that makes it so good and why I, and you, should give it a whirl. So you can listen and join in with a cultural conversation and say, oh yeah, I heard that was good, oh yeah, I heard she's supposed to be amazing in that. And seen anything good lately, we'll give you ideas and recommendations from some of the best people in their field, and we'll find out their passions and their obsessions, and maybe they'll be ones that you can share, or maybe you're already sharing them, and you can join in with that passion. So when someone asks me, seen anything good lately, Jace, I'm just pinging it right back and saying, have you? Because they've definitely seen something good and I want to know what it is and why they're loving it. From high cultural art to soap operas and sports, it's all fascinating and fair game to me. I just want to know, seen anything good lately? Joining me on this first edition of the podcast are author and screenwriter Emma Jane Unsworth, whose latest novel, Adults, became such a bestseller and will soon be a TV show written by her, and the actress Alexandra Daddario, who starred in Baywatch and True Detective and is now producing and starring in the rom-com Can You Keep a Secret? So we'll find out what they've been up to recently and if they've seen anything good lately. But before that, I should probably tell you if I've seen anything good lately. I mean, you asked first, didn't you? So to get the ball rolling with the recommendations, here we go. I loved a new documentary called The Booksellers about the rare and used bookshops of New York. All those dusty shelves and yellowing pages. It's a lovely film. It's like a a browse along those shelves and into the stories of, of old New York. I finished and enjoyed Sally Rooney's novel, Conversations with Friends, which was the precursor to normal people and is heading for the same TV treatment. So I wanted to get familiar with the material and the the milieu, uh, which is much the same as normal people, which I loved on the TV and was hooked by. Uh, So I'm thinking that similar things will happen with Conversations with Friends. And I thought Spike Lee's The Five Bloods on Netflix was just brilliant. I think it's one of the great Vietnam War films as four black ex-soldiers head back to Saigon to settle some unfinished business in the here and now. It's typical spike, wild and whirling, but brilliant, full of anger and politics and music and just a great performance by Delroy Lindo in the lead. And when they come to give out awards, if they do give out awards this year, he should definitely be nominated for leading man because it's a fantastic performance in the lead. Music-wise, I've been listening to Ashley Henry's album, Beautiful Vinyl Hunter, with that mix of jazz and soul and London hip-hop and Afrobeat rhythms. I've been loving that album. Ashley will be a guest on the Seen Anything Good Lately podcast very soon. 
Right, so that's what I've been watching. It's time now to bring on my very first guest, Emma Jane Unsworth's novel, Adults, hit the bestseller charts, uh, the story of media-obsessed and self-obsessed London media darlings. Before that, she'd written uh, a very well-received book called Animals, which is about sex and drugs and female friendship in your 20s, set in Manchester. And Emma Jane wrote the script, an award-winning script, for the film adaptation of it, which starred Holiday Granger and Alia Shawcat and was moved to Dublin. Uh, a great little film and definitely worth seeking out. Since then, Emma's become a much in-demand cultural commentator and a columnist in various magazines, and I'm delighted to say that I've got her on Seen Anything Good lately. So, Emma Jane Unsworth joins me from lockdown in Brighton. How are you doing? I am locked down in Brighton. Hi, Jason. I'm OK. I mean, it's a relative question, I think, these days, isn't it? The whole, how are you? How are you doing thing? But, but you're a writer, that... Emma Jane Unsworth. You're used to being locked down oh, and like, hemmed you know, in your little one, study. If one more person says that to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, not only is my brain kind of shot by the whole thing, but also I've got a three-year-old who's around lots more. He doesn't respect my work, Jason. You know what I mean? This three-year-old. Has he not, has he not read work. animals? I mean, there's genius right there. <laughs> I've told him he's got to be at least 25 before he goes anywhere near my work. <laughs> yes, it's probably um, a good idea but... as well. <laughs> it isn't just the fact that we are uh, alone at home. It's the general mindset that one needs to create, I suppose. And there's such a, th- this this event has created such a different mindset. I don't know what you were writing. Has it kind of seeped into anything that you were creating before this started? Totally. I mean, it's, it's so funny because I keep writing scenes in the next novel that I'm writing. I keep writing scenes where people are sort of having a cup of tea in a cafe or they, they kiss when they see each other and it just feels wrong I'm like, no, yes. they can't do that because they should be socially distancing so um so yeah so things like that it's, it's definitely infiltrated everything but I think that it will inevitably be mentioned because what I write is quite often set in contemporary times and so it can't not it's like you know 9-11 I mentioned that in animals because I just felt I had to two of the characters have been in New York around that time so it's just like these things have to be referred to if you want to write realistic contemporary fiction I suppose and your current novel adults uh which uh, it must be in paperback very soon it'll be in paperback in spring oh no no next spring next, sorry oh, really? it really takes that long does it okay yeah. <laughs> um, but is that very contemporary that it's about um i suppose uh, the, the culture of the mobile phone and social media and feeling cancelled and all ghosting and all that movement that's in there so that's very contemporary and yet it can't, obviously it can't you know covid hadn't happened yet but your characters in there would certainly be talking about covid if, if they were set now Definitely. I think also because the main character, Jenny, is so neurotic about everything and about everything that's that's to do with her social life and her communications and the way she, she just interacts with people. I think that this would, you know, set her on edge to, yes. to the nth degree. So I think she would definitely be, be analysing it. But but yeah, it, it, it is, I didn't really want to write a digital book. I mean, I, and I think that's what in some ways it is a digital book because so much of it, as you say, plays out online and in so on social media and in text messages and the, the snob in me thought you know d- I can't do that I should be writing luscious long descriptive paragraphs but but I think you you, you have to accept that you, you're not the kind of writer you you know dream of being always well also many people don't write in long sentences anymore because they they most of our writing is done in text messages or in you know in some kind of posts on social media so we, we the, the grammar and the aesthetics of what we write and how we write has shifted so much in the last 10 years we have different ways of expression and different ways of presenting ourselves so to not include those in modern literature would be remiss I think I think we you know sentences have changed so much over the years but they're not beautifully drafted quillmanship anymore <laughs> yeah, I think that's really true I think that's true and it was always the question of how do we present this you know on the page in the book because I'm a writer who really likes to play around with how the page looks as well and I love books that do that I yeah. really love books that are very playful visually textually and what would you call it typographically maybe I love books that do that um, and that are quite self-conscious in that way I suppose so so yeah we were like how are we going to show that we're going to have the text messages in bubbles are we going to use you know different fonts give me different font size so so that was all interesting and now I'm adapting the book for tv that question's become 
even more pressing. Yeah, really, I was going to say how... on screen, filmmakers have struggled for a while to really incorporate how that technology totally. infiltrates our mind. I think uh, the best I ever, the first time I ever saw it really well done, and this was quite recently, was Olivier Assayas did it in a film called Personal Shopper with Kristen Stewart, where she was being texted oh. by a ghost, and, and the text Ooh, kept appearing on the screen. It was really very good, actually. Uh, the, the, it might be a tip for you to watch that one actually before you yeah. uh, before you adapt. It really had you because you know you get the little um, when someone someone's writing a reply and those little the little dots kind of wiggle That's in your right. way. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There was tension in that. Watching those was actually a tense visual experience, wondering what who was going to reply and what they were going to reply. Uh, and he oh. wove that into the fabric of the drama. Amazing. I'll check that out. Thank you. Uh, that's what you're working on with uh, adults. You're going to adapt that for, for telly, is it? I am, yes, for telly. For that's the exciting, telly. is it? It's really exciting. It's daunting again because, you know, I'm not... I'm not a massively experienced screenwriter you know animals is my first film and and I, i've not i'd not been in any tv before i started adapting adults but but yeah i'm, I'm still quite a newbie so it's um, it's a bit daunting but it's, it's what i've always wanted to do as you know in combination with the novel writing as well I'm, I'm as much of a viewer as i am a reader so i just love being part of both worlds well your characters are in both uh, animals and in, and in adults they 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 use pop culture references film references music references all the time and i think that's where we are as well we, we can't we, we sort of defined by the culture we imbibe but so you're, you're that's why you're a great guest on seeing anything good lately because your characters live in the modern world and they sort of use all these uh all these vernaculars that come come to us through pop culture specifically the characters in adults who you're now adapting for the for the screen is it, it, that's going to be fascinating because adults is a book that takes a while to find out what the kernel of the story is and what's going to happen and what yeah. the drama is that's really true i think that there, you have to kind of really front load TV and the pilot has to do a heck of a lot. Right. So, it's, and, and even when you watch shows that you think have been amazing and beautiful and subtle and, and skillful, like Fleabag, I rewatched the pilot of the first season of, of Fleabag and, and I, and I thought, you know, if the, let's watch a master at work here. And, and I watched it and I thought, crikey, she shoved a lot in this. Mm. <laughs> and you kind of watch it back when you're watching it analytically and you think, hey, yeah, you know, that there's the, the pilot's got to do a lot. And, and you've got to, even for like something that's half an hour, which is what adults is going to be, um, even for quick comedy half hour episodes, you've got to get so much in that pilot because it's got to sell the show and it's got to set up the whole world and it's got to just get everything in motion. Uh, Emma Jane Unsworth, have you seen anything good lately? I mean, often when you're adapting something, some people disappear and say, well, I don't want to see anything else, any other people's work, because it's going to pollute my work and, and distract me from what I'm actually trying to do. But I guess if you're trying to take part in this burgeoning TV landscape, you have to be aware of not the opposition, but what the trends are, at least. So I'm, I, I'm yes. assuming you have seen some good stuff lately. I have, I have. And I kind of, I, I do like watching it. I, I find that I don't get too influenced. And I find that I, sometimes I watch stuff too analytically and that can ruin it a bit. But but quite often it just teaches me, you know, good lessons about how to, about the maths of, of structure, basically. Because I think that that's something that, that I need to, to learn. Oh, you've been paying attention in your executive so. notes meetings, haven't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're just the writer. Don't come back with the maths of structure. You're like, oh, but can't I just write a nice word here? <laughs> I tried to get away with that for so long and, and yeah, they, they found me out. They, they, told, <laughs> they, they made me do the structure. So, so yeah, so I watched it just to see where where the kind of turning points are and all that blah, 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 all that boring stuff. But I do, but I have seen some brilliant things um, lately. The main thing that I've seen and loved and I saw the most uh, recent episode of was last night was The Nest. I don't know if you've seen that on BBC One. We had uh, the, one of the first guests on the lockdown edition of Seeing the Think Good was the director of that, Andy D'Emony. He directed oh, Four Kids and It, good. which he'd done the, the sort of kids film that was on Sky Cinema. Uh, and I said to him, have you seen anything good lately? He said, well, I've actually been watching something else that I'm directed at the same time, which is The Nest, which is uh, written by Nicole Taylor. I said, oh, I didn't know that he directed that. It was rather miss So I ran to watch that and it's it's rather fascinating. I know the, the screenwriter of that, Nicole Taylor, Scottish screenwriter. Uh, who did yes. um, Wild, Wild Rose. Rose, exactly? which is also something well worth watching if you haven't seen it already. It's a wonderful film um, about a young woman in Glasgow who's just got out of prison and her complicated relationship with her mum. And, um, but yeah, The Nest is brilliant because that's so much about mothers and daughters as well. And But also I really love the way that Nicole Taylor skewers class in, in her writing. And really, you know, it's, it's so much about money and power and those 
big sort of like interesting engines underneath the the, sort of the stories and the interactions between the characters that you that women don't often write about or don't often get credit for writing about. Yes, it's not. But, it feel, but, I think you you really get a sense of her trying to smash some kind of ceiling here, but not in an angry way. Just in her, it, you know, with with barbed with a barbed look at it in a way, and sort of it shows it up. I think Wild Rose is the same thing. It shows up systems that are excluding women in certain ways. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I've been loving that, really, really loving that. Um, and then what else I've been watching? Oh, Hustlers. If you've not seen Hustlers, I'm a little late to the Hustlers party, which is a film, um, which is I watched on Amazon Prime with J Lo in it, and it's incredible. It's about a strip club. Have you seen it? I have seen it. Yeah, it's so good. It was like this beautiful escapism, but it was it wasn't you know it was hard hitting as well, and I I felt very involved in it, very moved by it's it. It's about a group but of it, lap dancers who end up heisting yeah. the 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 the, the, the frat. <laughs> boys of the uh, yeah, of the of wall really, street it's, it's kind of a bit revenge drama but it's but not because it's not it's not it's not as focused or as, as it's not it's not as dark as that i suppose i found it overall you know not not as bleak as, as it would have been if it, would, if it was pure revenge drama but i think that i just loved it because of the friendship that was yeah. in it between the women because that's one of my you know big thrills and and one of the things that i like to write about and and watch it's um, interesting isn't it because there's it's a very famous scene that j lo was going to get an oscar nomination for and she didn't in the end and it was and she does this 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 pole dance let's call it it's a very sexy pole yes. dance for a woman of a certain <laughs> age and i, I, I think people are just sat like, like eyes on stalks and i'm wondering because it was directed by a uh, and written by women and i was thinking yeah. if this was a male director would that scene be any more lurid i, th- I thought even if it was directed by a female filmmaker it, it's still pretty you know pretty it's powerful rather than sexy i think there's an interesting difference there if a man had made it they might have been a, a certain lurid camera movement somewhere along the line whereas this one it just holds that it, it, it the power is with j-lo with the dancer herself yeah i think so because i was watching her body during during that, in a in just watching how it was gripping the pole, yeah. <laughs> I was like, "How did you do that?" You know, seeing the content, yeah, how how she was controlling the movement, and for me, it, I didn't, yeah, it wasn't what it didn't feel sexual when I was watching that, which I know is, is a bit of a, a strange thing to say about a pole dance, but it did just feel like a power watching someone powerful showing off and doing their power thing, and yeah, I just loved. I, I thought it was a really smart film. I really did. I thought that it was, you know, that. The way it was written, the characters, and I thought it was really diverse as well, which was brilliant. I find that so seldom, I think, especially in, in stuff about, you know, a group of stuff that's about women, but it's also massively diverse. I just thought, yes, this ticks so many boxes yeah. for the kind of stuff that I want to make and I want to I want to see more of. Um, and, and yeah, it made me cry as well at the end. Oh. And it was, it was just good to be completely transported away to to big feelings that were nothing to do with covid i think it's based, so on, really based on a on a true story as well i think yeah one of those vanity yes. fair articles that then became a became a movie yes yeah yeah it did say that i think at the end so so yeah so that was good hustlers good that's a good shout actually yeah i should recommend people i'm glad it's out there to, to see because i think it got it got quite a lot of publicity and then it then the film died away. They, I think they really thought J-Lo was going to get her sort of Oscar norm and that would kind of ca- carry people to see the movie. Uh, and they were saying, oh, I don't know why J-Lo didn't get it. And, you know, she is fantastic in the film. I mean, she just, abs- she's fabulous in it, basically. Every time she's on screen, you're like, my God, this is a this is a performance going on here. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd not heard of it before and, and I'd not until I saw it advertised. And then when I first saw it advertised, I thought it was, when it first popped up on, on the TV, I thought it was about gangsters, women being gangsters or, you know... And we, I guess they are in a way, but but I, I I didn't quite get the sell of it right, and so I didn't know what to expect. But but yeah, I just thought I'm you know give this a go, and it good was shout. yeah, it was, it was great. It was great. It was really really good. And then yeah, I'm watching um, Parks and Recreation with my friend Katie because I'd never seen it before. I, never I seen see. Parks I and I'm going to admit I don't know Parks and Recreation. I know I should. Isn't it Aubrey yeah, Plaza and Amy that. Poehler and like amazing yeah. people? Yeah. And what I mean, I think I yeah. saw it. There was the first episode. I think I saw it when it came out. What well, it must be sort of seven, eight years ago. And I thought, hmm, that's a bit strange. And I didn't really get back to watching it again. And obviously, it's gone on to have a great life, and the people who are in it have become stars, and they're in their own comedy movies. So, I, tell me, Parks and Recreation, because I think this is something I could jump on and catch up with six seasons or seven seasons. So why should I? Why should you? Because it's. It's just, it's the funniest thing I have seen since Curb Your Enthusiasm, you know, in terms of short, brilliant, um, 
super short episodes. You can just, you know, whack them on in between doing other stuff. And the best thing about it, even though the dialogue's brilliant, the dialogue's absolutely wonderful, but the but what's even better than the dialogue is just the really witty little kind of segues and cuts, cutaways that the camera does. It's just, it's directed beautifully and it's just it's just a real pleasure to watch it's really bright it's in your face it's bouncy um and you just and love it, all the characters it, it's a sitcom is it and, and they, they what they look after it's a sitcom. some parks they do it's like it's like the government sort of body in, in america that looks after um parks yeah and and recreational grounds and playgrounds and things like that and that you know there's always tension between you know people who who hate you know this this organization and think that anyone who works for the government is this and that and so there's there's a lot of tension and, and it, it shows it, it manages to do a lot in these very short episodes where you get a really good sense of these characters who you actually love as well they, they're so, even more than than Kirby enthusiasm i think the characters in parks and rec you just you really really feel for them so the main woman who's played by a Amy Polo, the main character. She, um, she's she's. There's something very innocent about her, but there's also you know she's very ambitious. She really wants to do very well at her job, and and but she's also there's also such an innocence to her because she really wants to do a good job as well because she's a good person inside and she's a bit of a you know failure in inverted commas in some ways and that that she's got this ongoing sort of um, on off relationship with um with it with a guy who works in another sector of the government there and and so there's there's this all kind of rumbling on but she's a good friend and she's got a good heart and and it's not it avoids being cheesy because it's really edgy in in the jokes that it makes it's really it's always like south park levels of edgy okay. which is really so it's really in the, di- is in the dialogue is it, is it rather in like a situation where like to say like in friends that uh, uh, there there would be the one where they they do something there's an episode that happens is this a bit more like it's all about the dialogue and the attitude and the way that the lines are delivered yes it is and it's not as it's not as as sort of jolly as it's it's not as as, as glossy as friends i suppose right. in for example so in friends you'd have maybe someone would fall over and there'd be a joke in, in parks and rec someone would actually break their leg in front of the camera and then you know someone would, someone would kind of do a dell boy in friends you know through the bar yeah whereas in parks and rec someone would would very you know audibly and graphically break their leg <laughs> very good i didn't know that's an excellent recommendation uh what else have you yep. been watching and that you're doing very well i've definitely got more to say in terms of what i've been watching than what i've been reading right now i watch like loads of okay so this is a bit embarrassing but i do watch trashy things so that thing about that thing about when you're writing what i'll do if i'm stuck on something if i'm really really stuck on a plot point or on just if it's not flowing then i will take my laptop to the couch rather than at the desk in the my desk is currently in the bedroom at the moment to keep away from my son um but i'll take my laptop to the couch i'll put the tv on and i will watch something super trashy that is like you know that border control show that's about australia where people are you know coming in and they've got like a snake in their in their hat or they've got like drugs drugs in their bag or something like that and and they have to go through you know they lie about it or or they've got food and they're not allowed to bring food in i watch those kinds of shows (laughs) in the background so it feels like like a kind of company that's a bit dramatic. So there are stakes, you know, there are stakes going on in the background, but it's not something that I have to get too involved with. You, you can't know, bring stakes. You can't bring stakes into Australia. <laughs> They'll get you for that. <laughs> you can't bring stakes. <laughs> People do. People try. There be all sorts. <laughs> um, so I have something super. So, and that, believe it or not, in the background, quite often just gets me going again. I mean, that is so niche and weird. It's, That's it's kind brilliant. Of 30, because if you put pointless on or tipping point or the chase, then you're caught up in trying to answer some questions. So it's a bit, it's a bit distracting. But if you put sort yeah. of re- real drama on, I see it sort of feeds you, and you think, oh, there's stuff going on over there. I can, I can hone in. I like yeah. it. It's a very good technique. <laughs> And the other thing that I love to watch, I love to watch food shows. I mean, I watch food shows anyway. So I like love MasterChef, Great British Menu. Um, but I've been watching them more. I think some people are comfort eating throughout the lockdown. I've been comfort food watching. So I've been watching all of the food programs. And I've also just been thinking constantly about food and about like what my next meal is well, going to be. It? And it's just what you wake up with, what we're having for lunch. Spending, what we do. <laughs> and oh, even, my children, even my kids are like, well, what's for lunch today? Oh, we had that last week. And I was like, well, you had it last week and we're on lockdown. There's a war on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you I've been tuna. spending like ridiculous amounts of money on condiments and squash and things like that. I spent six pounds on a, a jar of what was it, tarragon mustard, the other day, and I was like, "Well, I can do it because I'm not going out." That's an so essential item. It's essential. Have it with my steaks. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's you know, I've been spending a lot of time 
thinking about food, spending money on food, I think as well as the fact that I just love food, I think it's also about control. I think it's because it's one of the few things that we can control right now, isn't it? What we eat to a degree, whereas, you know, everything else is so out of control. And it's also sort of allowed, isn't it? We can go out as long as we are going to buy something at a shop. So I, I've never been stopped. But if a policeman sort of said, well, where yeah. are you going, Sonny? And I said, well, I'm off, I'm off to get tarragon may- mayonnaise. It's absolutely, <laughs> I must go. <laughs> this is it. They're like the new nightclubs, aren't they, supermarkets? It's like, you know, you get you get you put your makeup on to go to the supermarket now. <laughs> That's the closest thing we get to going out. I know, and then you ruin but, yeah. it with a mask. It's, like, yeah. oh, it's not even my shade. <laughs> my wife has actually been designing some masks for friends and for the NHS as well, but she's said she's done, she's done a little knockoff line for herself with a little camo mask, which I quite like. Oh amazing. <laughs> you could even well, put lipstick on the outside of the mask. Oh, that's a good one. Real. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do the whole groucho, been, ma- been... groucho, groucho kind of mask thing. <laughs> Groucho your mask yeah. oh, that's a good one i like that <laughs> that's um that's de- there's definitely a line to be done in that i think <laughs> and then i've been like listening to stuff as yes. well so yeah i know you're um, a massive music fan what's been transporting you well i've not been listening to very much music ah. um so i've been listening to i've been listening to books and listening to podcasts i've never been into podcasts um before really i've listened to the sort of the odd one but i've really got into them now because i've been trying to run i've been doing this thing called couch to 5k just to sort of you know get out and have like a schedule and a program of running to do which is like it's an app and i think the, the government's behind it and it's really good the and government's it's, behind it it sounds sinister doesn't it it's yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it takes you it takes it really slow it's a really good way of, of if you if you're pr- practically immobile it gets you kind of running um you know not quite to you know to, to true athletic stands but definitely gets you gets you you know off your bum and it does and work and you think, oh i'm and allowed to rest oh i can do that oh i can run and then yeah. i can walk oh this is good i can walk for like 50 seconds here this yeah i know it's so good <laughs> and you see other people who you know are doing it as well like on the seafront when i, when I run on the seafront in brighton and, and yeah, you see the people who are like right stop now thank god i can like you know walk for a bit so and while i've been doing that i've been listening to to podcasts i've been listening to brenny brown's podcast it's a, quite new and that's called unlocking us and that is wonderful there's especially an episode with Glennon Doyle um, that's called Untamed, about Glenn Doyle's book Untamed. And that's just about different ways that as women um we, we have the the wildness knocked out of us by society and how you know ways that you can get it back and and it's just brilliant and I, I was just listening to it just thinking these women are like modern philosophers and, and I really don't think that's an overstatement. Is this just a US of... podcast Brenny Brown? It is yeah yeah she's American yeah she is but um it's called Unlocking Us, and and you can yeah just just get it from, from I just have like the little podcast. I know so little about podcasts. Wherever I just you know get your, pod, you're wherever you get where, your podcast, you're allowed to get your podcast platform. <laughs> Yes, and and it's wonderful. It's a really positive, empowering, brilliantly clever listen. It, you know, it's proper something to get your your brain teeth into if you, if you fancy like an in, a warm intellectual listen. It's it's just really, really, really good. And then also, I've been listening to Heartburn by Nora Ephron, which I've oh. never read in book form, but it's read the the audio book is read by Meryl Streep, oh. which is just a dream. So I've been listening to that, and that has been joyous what a recommendation because it's such a great uh book by Nora Ephron her writing she's one of my favorite writers of all time but both as script Mm. both in in novels and both in her memoirs about about my neck and all of those things yes Uh, but but Meryl is in the film isn't she of Heartburn so she reads the whole novel I've not seen the film of it either I've not seen the film I know yeah I, I don't know I've not seen I've not read the book I've seen the film I've just and in a way it's kind of good that I saved it for this point in time because it just feels like I've got this like wonderful gift that I've you know given myself of heartburn yeah by Nora Ephron I've read her other stuff but but it just feels like I've got this to, to enjoy for the first time it's so comforting yeah it's again yeah, it, it was Meryl Streep and Jack Nicholson in the in the movie and it's about isn't it it's her breakup with um with the uh, well, he he was her husband, so it's a kind of yeah uh, yeah yeah. It's, uh, it's what was so it? Carl good. Bernstein, the, the the Woodward Woodward and Bernstein. So Woodward, it was the yeah. uh, with the, the 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 all the president's men uh, people. She was with one of yeah. them, and this is about her breakup with him. And I think uh, it's, it's it's fabulous to her reading it would be amazing because she yeah. knew Nora Ephron so well, and they had this kind of meeting of of minds what a brilliant brilliant audiobook that must be uh you've sounded brilliant today emma jane unsworth so nice of you to join us uh, to tell us what you've been watching brilliant recommendations the nest hustlers parks and rec heartburn read by meryl street uh, and brenny brown's unlocking us podcast great recommendations to fill our time thank you so nice to talk to you jason take care thank you thanks emma jane unsworth there
brilliant as ever her novel Adults is fantastic I can't wait for it to be made into a TV series which I'm sure will be just as gripping and page turning as the book is itself <laughs> My next guest on this edition of Seen Anything Good Lately is Alexandra Daddario. She's the actress who starred in Baywatch. She was also in True Detective in the first series. She played uh, Woody Harrelson's mistress in that. She's had a very long and uh, spectacular career, starting out in Percy Jackson and The Lightning Thief, and is now uh, producing her with her own uh, production company, uh, Romantic Comedies for and by Women. Uh, and she stars in the latest. It's called Can You Keep a Secret? And you can catch that on stream streaming platforms in the UK. I caught up with her in LA to find out if she could keep a secret. I can keep a secret as good as anyone, you know? I feel yes, but I I still at the same time feel if you really want something to be secret, you don't tell anyone. I'm not going to tell you one. I don't have one in particular that I need to share with you, but it's I good to... that in general to everyone listening. Good. It's good to know. I don't know. want that kind of responsibility. <laughs> for them. Well, we, in rom-coms, they always make a mistake. And that, that's the point. We actually watch humans in all their flaws completely screw things up. And you're like, no, why have you done that? And you, you guys keep doing that in this film. Don't we do that in real life? I mean, it's so relatable because you always, there's always, you're never going to, nothing's ever going to be perfect, you know? And it's sort of perfect in its imperfection. So we tried to find the heart and the, the love in that. The, 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 the will they won't they, the screwball element of it. Uh, was, is that something you like playing as a comedian? You know, it's something you can really kind of spitball backwards and forwards, particularly the stuff on the plane, for example, which is played for comedy. And you're sort of up there pitching, you know, just spewing out all your secrets. I love comedy. I don't know if I'm a comedian, but I love, I think that the funniest thing is the truth of any, any situation. And this is obviously, there's moments that are heightened, but the truth of any situation is the funniest and the awkwardness. And we're always trying to get away. I feel like in life, we're always trying to get away from the humor of things. We don't want things to be awkward. We don't want things to be weird. We want things to feel safe and like how, and, and we're properly presented like, you know, and I, I like to lean into the absurd and the weird and this, movie really gave me an opportunity to really lean into that and I always tell my directors pull me back if it's too much you know same thing with horror films I can get a little over top but I I think that that one of the things I love about acting is really leaning into that and we definitely leaned into the awkward with this I think we're so verbal these days with the yeah sure the back the kind of spitballing that we forget that to leave some gaps sometimes and actually uh can you keep a secret isn't as wordy as some of them you know I think maybe obviously you like Julia Roberts is obviously one of your heroines she was brilliant at comedy but well, still is oh brilliant i mean the, the, the julia roberts is julia roberts the charisma and the intelligence and the the groundedness that she brings to her roles are so incredible it's such an incredible combination not to mention that smile and the beauty and but it's just a combination that 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 works so well and can be hard to hit. Obviously, you like Meg Ryan as well, if you're liking um, When Harry Met Sally. Are, are you a black and white movie person? Do you kind of put on a bowl of popcorn, watch black and white movies? Is that what you've been doing in quarantine? Yeah. It's funny you say that. Yes, we have actually, me and the girls that I'm quarantining with, we've been trying to get into old movies that we haven't seen in a while. And we watched Bringing Up Baby recently, trying to do some Hitchcock. Um, I really, I used to watch movies obsessively, two, three movies a night, going through all of the classics. And and then I, I stopped doing that. And this has been a time that I've really been able to get back into some of that. So bringing up Baby, Howard Hawks, it's, you know, that's hilarious uh, screwball yeah. comedy there. Would you, would you would have liked to have been around in that old Hollywood? Oh, I w- oh, yes. If I could have been a movie star... In the time before social media, I think I would have been a lot more relaxed. I really, really love old film, the the dresses, the, and I, I'm really lucky that I get to experience that kind of glamour, but I just, there's something about, I guess it's always better in your mind, right? But I have this idea that every morning you wake up and you just, the first thing you do after your showers, your hair gets curled up and then you put on a long flowing gown and that's how you go about your day and I would have loved that <laughs> yeah how long have you been doing this Alex I mean you've been and I, I, how long have you been acting for because it feels like it feels like a long time I remember you put Percy Jackson and the, and the lightning thief I remember that's a long time ago yeah um, I, I've been acting since I was 12 I grew up in New York City I, I did commercials I was on a soap when I was 16 and then I booked Percy Jackson when I was 22 and you know, I'm 34 now, so I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I'm pretty much stuck in it. This is what I have to do. I have no other skills. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I love it. I absolutely love what I do. I'm really lucky that I found my calling early. 
And uh, I feel grateful that I've been able to learn and get better and find new things and learn more about film and how it works over time. Um, and it's it's really exciting to to be in a position where I can now produce and 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 be on set and really know what it is I'm talking about. Because you about. produced this one, uh, Can You Keep a Secret, from the novel by Sophie Kinsella. But it's an old, I mean, it's, it's a novel she's had out since like 2003 or something. Yes, I believe that the I believe that um, a studio had the rights, and a lot of the times people will buy the rights to books, and then it'll sort of sit on the shelf where there'll be a script that isn't up to par, or th- something will happen. And um, like Baywatch, for example, I think that script was around for ten years before it finally got made, or even longer. And if they were polishing like, it to the high sheen of uh, right, of wit that right. it ended up, of course. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's weird. I don't know how these things happen, but um, it's just. It's just that these projects will just sit around and then you ultimately just get to a point where it's like, let's just get it made. And and how can we make it the best with the with the best people who really believe in this, who really want to bring hard, who really want to work hard on it? And um, I was grateful to to be uh, part of it because it was it was there were so many different incarnations of it. When you said you've been in quarantine and watching some old movies, have you seen anything good lately? Tell me what you have seen. Well, you know what I saw that I I missed? I missed Parasite, which is an insane thing to say as an actor. I just had a really busy end of the year last year, and I just didn't manage to see the Oscar films. So I I saw Parasite, and it was terrifying. Um, And I think I knew it was scary, and I knew, but I I tried not to learn too much about it because I sort of like to go into films cold, but obviously I couldn't escape the fact that it won all these epic Oscars and broke down all these barriers and stuff like that but um i really loved it it was just it was so scary it felt like a horror film yeah and especially if we're all i mean it's all set in in a house basically so we're we're all kind of quarantined in these houses (laughs) and then you're sort of thinking oh don't go down to the basement oh that claustrophobic feeling of that basement oh my gosh it was shot in it was shot so incredibly um so that we rewatched pretty woman and now we're watching uh, Runaway Bride. Oh, okay. You're going for the for the sequel, you know. We're going, we're going yes. <laughs> um, baby, we've, we've been going through all kinds of stuff. There's also, my roommates watch a lot of um, reality TV. So there's been a lot of that. So every now and then, some video games. So every now and then we can negotiate for the TV. And what about music? Are you listening to some music? Yeah, I listen. I listen to, we listen to a lot of 90s pop hits, actually. Um, sometimes we'll just get in the car and go for a drive and blast music. We'll blast like all of our favorite movies, uh, favorite music from the nineties. Um, and a lot of classical music we will sort of put on some Debussy or Beethoven, cook dinner, create a little culture in the house. Yeah. You know, classy create, stuff. Create a classy <laughs> stuff. Create a structure for ourselves where we feel like we're having a normal sort of life. And when you say nineties hits, who, who are your nineties jams, Alex Daddario? Goo Goo Dolls, Biggie, um, Britney Spears, um, Shania Twain, Sheryl Crow, um, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you also um, you, you also start with one of my favorites, Our Lips Are Sealed by the Go-Go's, which is a great, great track, which kicks oh, off yeah, the film. Oh, yeah, that's a great track, too. Belinda Carlisle, when she was younger. That's a, It's just a, a, a great track. So where else are we going to see? We're going to see you here in the UK in um, Can You Keep a Secret? But you, you've just launched a YouTube channel. In case we missed you in the world, we need to find you more. Yes, I mean, being in quarantine, I feel a few things. I feel, first of all, everything is turning digital. I think this will only speed up the turn to digital. Um, I think that it will allow me more control in how I promote and what I create and um, create some independence. So I, and, you know, we're bored. So we decided (laughs) with the girls, one is a writer, one's an actor, and we're just going to make these silly videos and we're just playing around and um, I'll have some sort of content people haven't seen before from films and that kind of thing. And, um, and everyone can check out what we're doing in quarantine there. Well, there we go. We can keep up with you uh, in, in sort of real life, the, re- the, the, the YouTube channel of Alex Desario, but also uh, Can You Keep a Secret, which I think is coming out digitally. You know, it's, it's amazing. Normally you have a big premiere like you would but they watch, you have a big premiere and, and now you can't have those things. Ironically, m- many more people can see it, I guess, you know, at the same time around the world. Yeah, it's very strange. I mean, I had another film I was promoting a couple of weeks ago called We Summon the Darkness. I don't know if that's out in the UK. Not yet. Um, I think it's been delayed, yet. yeah. 
look for it. But yeah, I mean, things are being delayed. The way we promote is different. Um, people are watching things in a different way. Um, it's definitely very weird. But I think if there's escapism, if, if people are looking to feel and laugh and 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 um, get their mind off of things, and this is, you know, films, TV, music, I mean, that's what we're all leaning into, reading more. I'm definitely reading more. So I encourage everyone, if they want to check out uh, can you keep a secret? It's very, very funny. It's very charming. It's a very cute romantic comedy. Tyler Hecklin takes his shirt off too. And <laughs> for those who are familiar with Tyler Hecklin, it's a beautiful sight to behold. So I, I encourage everyone to check the film out. He has rock hard abs. So there's no doubt about it. No doubt. No <laughs> yeah, spread a little sunshine with your rom com. Uh, can you keep a secret? Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for coming Thank on the show. You. And keep Have keep watching time. the old movies. I will. Bye. Bye, Alex. So that's it for the very first edition of Seen Anything Good Lately. Hope you enjoyed it. Do let us know. Go to jasonsolomons.com and go to my page on Seen Anything Good Lately and let us know what you think about it. And on there, I'll put all the recommendations from my guests so you don't have to have a little pen and paper at the ready to jot them down when you hear them or keep pressing rewind as you're jogging around the park or sitting on wherever you're sitting, whichever bench or tube train or bus. Do you remember them? In the next episode on this series, I'll have Simon Bird and Amory Duff, fantastic lineup. Uh, and the rest of the season, we've got David Thewlis, Woody Allen, ladies and gentlemen, Woody Allen on Seen Anything Good Lately, Joe Hartley, fantastic actress from the This Is England series, uh, Ashley Henry, the musician, a whole host of guests will be talking about what's turning them on, what they're listening to, what they're watching, and if they've seen anything good lately. I'll see you soon for episode two. <laughs> <laughs>